Pedro attacks in Lebanon has shocked the world. More than 3,000 people have been injured in different parts of Lebanon when their handheld pager devices exploded simultaneously. At least 11 people have lost lives. The number is only expected to rise. Reports say Iran's ambassador to Lebanon was also injured during that incident. Explosions were reported in the capital Beirut, Bika, Nabatia and Bint. There are multiple theories now that are doing the rounds as to how this explosion even took place. A few experts not ruling out possibility of hacking and tampering those pagers, among others. In fact, Hezbollah has issued an uh, official statement now where they call the incident as the biggest security breach, blaming Israel for the incident. Hezbollah has added that few of their fighters were also killed in the explosion and Israel will pay the price for this aggression. Israel, meanwhile, has carried out airstrikes targeting Hezbollah terror outfits in South Lebanon. IDF warplanes attacked the organization's military buildings in five different areas in South Lebanon. Uh, استوجبت إما إجراء عمليات جراحية أو إدخال على أقسام العناية الفائقة وسجل كذلك سقوط عدد من الشهداء العدد لهلا ثمان شهداء بمن فيهم بما فيهم طفل عمره ثمان سنين في بالبقاع حوالي الساعة ثلاثة ونص من عصر اليوم بدأت أعداد كبيرة من الجرحى بالتوافد على المستشفيات وكانت هذه الجرحى أساسي بانفجار بأجهزة اتصال بيجر كانت حاملة الأعداد اللي وصلت على الطوارئ كانت أعداد كتير كبيرة وكان واضح إنه هي بمختلف المناطق. Well, I can tell you that the U.S. was not involved in it. Um, the U.S. was not aware uh, of this incident in advance, and at this point, we're gathering information. Uh, we'll continue to collect information. I don't have any, any public readout to give now, but uh, we're collecting information um, uh, in the same way that journalists are across the world um, to uh, gather the facts about what might have happened. When it comes to the Middle East, that is something that we have spoken to before. We are always uh, obviously concerned about that. This particular incident, I don't want to get into uh, speculate about it or get into hypotheticals about it. Uh, you know, when we think about the conflict along the blue line uh, between Israel and Hezbollah, it has, uh, it has gone on for way too long, uh, long enough. And so it is in everyone's interest to resolve it quickly and diplomatically. Uh, so we continue, we continue to believe that there, is going, there should be a diplomatic resolution to this. The, the pager blast, I can tell you, you know, to my knowledge, there's no U.S. involvement uh, in, in this at all. Again, it's something that we're monitoring. Uh, and in terms of uh, potential escalation, you know, I go back to what I said earlier in terms of a key focus for this department and the U.S. government writ large is on working uh, with partners in the region to include Israel to prevent uh, the conflict between Israel and Hamas from spiraling into a wider conflict. And, and that includes the tensions along the Israel. So Hezbollah internal communication system is exposed so and using pager is a weakness so israel went after this as a rational choice to damage hezbollah in a certain way that they cannot commit to a major attack to israel those major competitors with hezbollah those major competitors with syrian regime it could be ISIS, could be Al-Qaeda, you know. And they say that we don't want Hezbollah here, you know, supporting Assad regime. Turkey too, like Turkish intelligence is very strong in Syria. And Turkey mm -hmm. used very close to Israel. Like even, you know, a question mark that could be some of tip off came from Turkish intelligence to Israel. Because it's only a year that we see now Turkish-Israeli relations are getting sour. Let me quickly cut across to Ashutosh Mishra joining us for more on that. Ashutosh, how was it possible for all those pages to simultaneously explode? And that too at a distance from, uh, you know, remote areas, people who are in many different places, all of them 
uh, had their pagers exploding right at the same time. It was all simultaneous. What do we know more about this? Well, Navila, that's only possible if it is a programmed specific way. But uh, was it programmed during manufacture or was it programmed particularly during the transportation? Now, what we know and what we are hearing from the Hezbollah security agencies that they were probing, initially the suspicion was on the uh, Taiwanese company, but immediately they issued a statement that it is the BAC company from Hungary, from Eastern Europe. They use their brand name and they are the real manufacturer who supplied. Now, since there are economic sanctions and restrictions on Lebanon, they basically imported all these stuff from Taiwan and from the Hungarian company via different routes. And that uh, took nearly three to four months and possibly during that that since it's a great scale of operation and this kind of human work only possibilities when there are some, uh, you know, the intelligence agencies are involved. So this kind of handwork requires a lot of intelligence gathering and you heard the Turkish uh, uh, foreign uh, affairs experts saying that probably even some, some intelligence also came from the, uh, from uh, Turkish intelligence network. And on that, probably during the handwork was done during the transportation because the device that kind of this that we have used in uh, 1999, 2000 and now most of the country, these are phased out. So when Hezbollah commander and Nasrallah all ask all these men to throw out your communication devices because there you have a vulnerability, they can be, uh, you know, the wavelength can be uh, coded and perhaps your location will be exposed. And that's, we have seen how the drones are attacking. So that's why they were using these pagers totally off phase from all these countries. And perhaps it was mapped and uh, the explosive device would fit inside with a proper um, uh, mechanism and a program that were designed designed in a way that with a remote device on certain time as and when the responsible agency which carried out these explosions could carry out. Now, Israel, remember, until unless there are, you know, man on the ground or the boots on the ground involved in certain operation, they often deny such kind of operations. Either it is airstrike, they acknowledge, or some elimination they carry out like the revenge uh, uh, in the past, they acknowledge. But including the attack in Tehran, they did not. And this also attack, we do not have any official word coming from Israel. But now the Hezbollah security agencies are blaming Israel that it is the yeah. basically Jews who have carried out this strike in their country and they have even warned that there will be retaliation.